everyone to At The Master C. I'm Pastor Regina Moore, and as always, just thrilled to be in your home once again at a new time. So we're just thanking God. We're here with you now at 11 o'clock p.m., and we're also on at 12.30 a.m. on Saturday mornings. So we just thank God for what he's doing. Amen. Today we've been talking about making choices. We're going to read the story that's very familiar from Luke 16. It's about the rich man and Lazarus. And, you know, everyone makes choices. But if you make the wrong one, the wrong choice could cost you dearly. So take a listen. I'll be back with you in just a few minutes. Enjoy Thank the Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, God. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God, we lift you up. We give you glory. We bless your name. We do it because you're worthy. Hallelujah. We do it because there's no God like you. There's no one to be compared unto you, Lord God. We thank you. You're the giver of life. Thank you, Lord God. You've breathed into us the breath of life. Thank you, Jesus, that we are alive in you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad to be alive in the Lord today? Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. God is good and worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 you're worthy, Lord. Yes, you're worthy. Hallelujah. As we stand before you today, oh God, hallelujah, and as we think of your goodness and your mercy and your love, your undying love, never-ending love, oh God, Father, we can't pay you this morning. We don't have anything that we can render unto you. You know, David said, what shall I render unto the Lord for all that he's done for me? He said, I'll take the cup of salvation and I'll raise it up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Because he has allowed us to drink from the cup of salvation. Thank you, Lord God. And all we can do this morning is raise it up and say thank you. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for delivering me. Thank you for calling me out of darkness into your marvelous light. It's a marvelous light, y'all. Hallelujah. Because there are many that are still in darkness. But we're in a marvelous light. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How many of you glad for the light this morning? I'm glad for the light. I'm glad we're able to see. Thank you, Jesus, because there are many that are still stumbling in darkness. Oh, God, and we pray you bring them out. We pray in the name of Jesus that they come out of darkness, Lord God. We thank you, Lord. You have decreed in your word that we are the light of the world. We are the city that's sitting on a hill that cannot be hidden. So we thank you, Father. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you that we are that city. Glory to God. We are that city that's sitting on a hill that cannot be hidden. Hallelujah. So let me tell you something today. Don't try to hide. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let your light shine. Let your light be known. Hallelujah. Let the glory of the Lord just permeate from you. No matter where you go, whoever you around, let them know, you know what? I've been with Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Remember, that's what they told the disciples one time. They said, you know, they, they, uh, they ignorant. They are unlearned. But this one thing we cannot deny, they have been with Jesus. Hallelujah. So you can call me unlearned all you want to. You can say what I do and do not know. If I've been with Jesus, whoo, my God, hallelujah. I got everything I need. Hallelujah. Everything I need, everything I'll ever want, hallelujah. Let me tell you, we find it in him, glory to God. Can we just begin to worship God for that? God, you're so worthy. Can, can you just take a few minutes right now? Just, just think about the goodness of the Lord. Just just concentrate on something that you know. I know all of us have that moment 
Well, we can think of that thing, that one thing. Ooh, if he hadn't gotten me out of that. Ooh, Jesus, Jesus, Father, Father, hallelujah. I know this was the Lord's doing. Hallelujah. It was marvelous in my sight. It was marvelous in the sight of those around me. I know the hand of God visited me that time. That one time right there, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I know we got many, but if you can just think of that one thing this morning. Ooh, I got my mind. See, you say that and then so many things start rushing to your mind. <laughs> But think of that thing that you know God did. Uh, Pastor, I, I keep getting more than one. Well, you know what? Think of those things then. Hallelujah. And once you just begin to remember, just remember that sometimes that's all we have to do is just remember the goodness of God and all that he's done for us. It provides. It provokes a praise. It provokes a hallelujah out of you. My God. Woo, you just let your mind go back, hallelujah, and you just begin to think. Come on, just begin to lift your hands right now. Even those that are watching, those that have joined us via Facebook Live, we welcome you this morning, hallelujah. We're just in this time, in this moment, where we're just thinking of the goodness of the Lord. When we're just thinking of the things God has brought us through and how he's delivered us, amen. So we just want to think on those things. Amen. We just want to think on the goodness of God. So just think about that thing that God has done for you. And once you get that visualization and just begin to remember the joy that came over your heart or uh, even the awe. Amen. Just begin to praise it. Just begin to worship him. Just begin to tell him thank you. Just begin to lift him up and give him glory. Just begin to bless his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Because if it had not been, Lord, you came in the nick of time. You were there right on time, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My feet were almost gone, Lord God. The enemy had surrounded me. Hallelujah. But you stepped in. You bowed the heavens. You came down yourself. Hallelujah. Pull me out of a horrible situation. You gave me life. You gave me life. You gave me life. You delivered me. You delivered me. You delivered me. You delivered me from the pits of hell. Hallelujah. You delivered me from destruction. Glory to God. You delivered me when they wanted me to lose my mind. Hallelujah. That situation right there that wanted me to drive my car over a cliff. Hallelujah. But God, you sustained me. God, you kept me. God, you protect, protected me. Hallelujah. You became everything that I needed. You were my peace in that moment, Father. Woo, when the storms were raging, my God, ooh, my Jesus. When the storms were raging all around me, hallelujah. When I lost my loved one, glory to God. When I went through the divorce, when I lost my possessions, when my body was racking with pain, when they pronounced the diagnosis upon me, Lord God, all of the things that were around me, you were Jehovah Shammah. Hey, and I know Jehovah Shammah this morning. He's the God that's there. I'm there. I'm here. I'm ever present. Hallelujah. I don't lie. I don't cheat. I don't trick. Hallelujah. I'm faithful. And I do it because I love you. No other reason but simply because I love you. So, Father, we thank you for your love this morning. Thank you for agape, unconditional, unprovoked, Lord God. Nothing we could do to deserve it. The only provoking there was, Lord God, because you decided to do it in spite of who we are. You continue to look beyond our faults. And you focus on the fact that we're your children. You're a good daddy. You're a good daddy. Yes, you are. Woo, you're a good daddy, good daddy, good daddy. Hallelujah. You'll rock us and put us in your lap and love us in spite of ourselves. Now, we love you this morning, and we bless you this morning. 
And we give you the glory that's due your name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come, Holy Spirit, the more. Invade this place. Invade this house. And then invade these temples. You are never dry and fountain. You are comforter and counselor. So take control right now, right now. Take control of our thoughts. Take control of our actions. Take control of us. Take control of our words. Take control. Take control. Hallelujah. We need a release of the anointed that will cause us to sit back and cause us to yield ourselves unto you that you may have your way in us. So we thank you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Woo, glory, 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 glory. This is a good day. It's 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 a good day in the Lord. Hallelujah. Woo, it's a good day. It's a good day in the Lord. Hallelujah. It's a day he's made. So somebody just start rejoicing because it's a good day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We hear you, we hear you, we hear you, we hear you. He hears you. Come on, make the devil real mad. Hallelujah. Only, we, only way you can really get on his nerves is when he thought, I thought I told her to be quiet. I thought I told him not to praise. And you praise him anyway. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. We know our Redeemer lives. Hallelujah. We know he lives and we know he is alive in us. Glory to God. <laughs> Woo, so that's why we shout. That's why we praise. Hallelujah. Come on, just wave at somebody and tell them, I know he's good. I know he's good. Tell them it's a good day. Hallelujah. It's a good day. It's a good day in the Lord. I'm going to wave at y'all. It's a good day. Hallelujah. It is a good day. Praise the name of Jesus. Woo, thank you, Lord God. Woo, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Because I tell you, I sense the presence of God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your power. And we thank you that you will preach this message. You will teach this message, Holy Spirit. We thank you that you will do it in the name of Jesus. We already thank you in advance, Lord God, that the word falls on good ground. We thank you in advance for ears to hear and to receive. Hallelujah. We will not shirk back, Lord God. We will not draw back in the name of Jesus. When we hear your voice, we will not harden our hearts. Hallelujah. But we will receive of you. Glory. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Woo. Happy Sunday morning. Happy Sunday morning. Yeah. Always have joy. Always have joy, my God, because let me tell you, so much that comes out of having joy. Peace, strength, the presence of God. In God's presence, God's joy is full. Amen. Let me tell you, it'll bring healing to your body. Thank you, Lord. You know that's been scientifically proved, but it was already written in the Bible. Yes, it was. That a merry heart do, do you good like medicine. Amen. Hallelujah. They caught on. Amen. Because it's the truth. He just need to give some logic behind it. I'm going to go ahead and let you have some science behind this because I need you to understand that it's true. That a merry heart really does you good like medicine. Amen. Releasing what? Those healthy endorphins and all of that good stuff they talk about. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, we got it released. Hey, thank you. Glory to God. <laughs> Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. It's good to be in the house. Good. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, SGM. Hallelujah. Bless you. Bless you. Welcome, Facebook friend and family. Hallelujah. We thank God for you. I want to share something that the Lord put on my heart. Um, thought we were going to get to share it last Sunday, but he said otherwise. Praise God. And we're thankful that he did. But this is really going to kind of be two messages in one. You know, we'll do that from time to time. But 
I, I, I want to do this because it was just really impressed in my spirit. I'm beginning by reading in Luke 16, 19 through 31. This is a very familiar scripture, but I want I'm going to read it all so that we can get uh, the full understanding of, of the message. And this first part of the message is about choice choices. Amen. Because we, there comes a time in our life when we have to decide. We have to choose which direction we're going to go in. Amen. Because, well, and you can say, well, you know what? I haven't decided to follow anyone just yet. Trust me, you're going to follow somebody. Amen. Your choice not to follow Jesus automatically puts you in the category to follow something else. Amen. Because he only has one way. And if you don't follow that way, then you're going to follow the other way, the way of the world. Amen. So you're going to follow something. So it's about choices. Amen. And, and we always like to make these appeals because of what God has told us, the foundation of this ministry, the vision of this ministry is to minister the ministry of reconciliation first. Amen. And then to help equip others to do the same, but we have to be equipped ourselves. So we want to always stay at the crust and the foundation of what God has called us to do, and that's to minister the ministry of reconciliation to those who do not know Jesus Christ, because he is going to return. He, he, he will. He will return. Amen. And we must be ready to meet him, or there is an alternative. Amen. And there's no way around that. This is just the way he's designed things. I didn't design it. I didn't make it up. I didn't write this. Amen. I have to follow this like everybody else. Amen. I have to make choices like everybody else. I have to do right like everybody else. If I don't make no choice, if I come and tell you, all y'all know what? I have decided that I'm just not going to follow. I'm going to stop following. G I'm just not going to follow anybody for, for a few months. Oh, yeah, Pastor, you're going to follow somebody. Mm -hmm. First of all, your decision not to follow is already an indication that you're following. Thank you. Amen. You're going to follow someone. Praise the Lord. So let's look at this scripture and let's read this. Luke 16, 19 to 31. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared scrumptiously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into the into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, Remember that thou in your lifetime receivest your, your good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and you are tormented. And besides all this between us and you, there is a great gulf fix. So that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from him. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, nay, Father Abraham, but if one went, went unto them from the dead, they would repent. And he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded through one rose, that one, though, though one rose from the dead. Amen. Now, let me just first of all say that this man is not in hell and being tormented because he is rich. He is in hell and being tormented because he never accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior. He made a choice. He made choices. Amen. And his choice was not to give his life to Jesus. Amen. It says that he was clothed in purple and fine linen. He fared scrumptiously every day, which means he had more than enough. 
Every day this man had more than enough. He lived well. He could do whatever he chose to do, but he did not choose to be compassionate to Lazarus, nor to operate in the love of God. And that's how it is, you know. That's how it is, you know, in the word. When the word says that, you know, you have to you have to make choices. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about making choices now. That if you have not chosen Jesus, today is the day. Amen. How is the world going to know that we belong to God when we have love for who? For one another. He said, when you have love for the brethren, that is an indicator that you belong to me, that you're mine, that my stamp of approval is upon you and you're operating in my love. Okay. Lazarus was a beggar. He was laid at this man's gate. He was full of sores. Now, does that mean that he was disabled? I'm not really sure. All I know is it said he was laid there. So what does that say? Somebody had to bring him there. And if he was going to leave, somebody had to come back and get him. Amen. He has been laid at this man's gate. And when I was reading this, then the Holy Spirit asked me a question. He said, has anyone been laid at your gate? Has there anyone been put in your path? Is there anyone you've come in contact with? They're not asking much. Lazarus didn't ask much. He just said, give me the crumbs that fall from your table. But have you come in contact with anyone that needs something from God and you're not giving it to them? And you're not supplying it. You got more than enough. You got to, uh, we, we're saved. We say we're filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't let me go through the whole, whole phrase, y'all. We water walking, Bible toting, devil smoking. Amen. We say, I got the power of God living on the inside of me. I remember a message I preached years ago, and it was, can you spare a cup? If you have water and I'm thirsty, can you give me anything? Can you give me from your reservoir, from your well, what you have down on the inside of you? Can you share that with someone else? That's what we're talking about. We're talking about choices. And I know we're leaning toward the choices of becoming a, a child of God and accepting Jesus Christ. But we also, that are a part of the family, we have choices. This man made a choice. He wasn't saved. That's how he ended up where he ended up. But those of us who are, those of us who are saved, what are we doing? What are we sharing? What are we giving out when we have the answers? Amen. This was not a hard thing for this man to do. He lived scrumptiously every day. It, there wasn't a day that went by that this man didn't have more than enough. It's almost like the story you remember in Luke 21 with the widow's might. And this woman gave and the others were giving. But what did Jesus say? He was watching the offering. But what did he say? He said, they're giving out of their abundance. What they're giving is not even bothering them. They're not phased. They gave out of their riches. She gave all that she had. Everything that she had, she brought it to him. So this would not have hurt him. And guess what? It's not going to hurt us either. It's not going to hurt us to share with others what God has entrusted with us. Freely I've given, freely you give. You freely you've received and freely you give. Amen. So it's about making choices. He had more than enough. It wasn't a hard thing. You know, sometimes we think, well, preaching in here is easy. But when you got to go get on the street and on the corner or in places where folk really not trying to hear you, you can't just keep running back here. You have to preach the gospel where it is needed. Amen. I'm thankful we have the opportunity to gather on Sundays. I'm thankful we have the opportunity to strengthen each other. But 99.9% of the time we come in here and preach, we're going to get some amens. Amen. But it's where you go when you know, you know what? They looking at you like, hey, I will be glad when you go sit down and get on off. You disturb it our peace. Get off the corner. Now, thank God. And see, the enemy will try to tell us that. But how many of us, we've been out and the people have been so receptive. So it's about making choices, y'all. 
It's about coming out of your comfort zones, coming out of your place of ease, amen, and engaging yourself where it's needed the most. 1 John 3 says this, herein perceives we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. We just got through talking about that. Whosoever has the world's goods, see as his brother have need, you shut up your bowels of compassion. How dwelleth the love of God in you? That's a simple question. How can I say I love God? No, you got a need. Amen, amen. Welcome back, welcome back. I pray that message was a blessing to you. You know, it was a blessing to me. And even though I'm saved, you still have to be mindful of the choices that you make. Because we talked about not the fact that the rich man was tormented and went to hell because he rejected Jesus, and that is why he was there, but because we are saved, we still have conscious choices that we have to make also, amen? We have to choose to continue to follow Jesus. We have to choose to continue to give out of ourselves what God has blessed us with. The rich man had more than enough. He had more than enough. He fared well every day, but he made a choice to not be compassionate and to not to give his life to Jesus Christ. We are faring well also. I know there's a lot of things going on around us, but let me tell you something. We are blessed of the Lord. We may not have everything we want, but for the majority of us, our needs are being met and we still have more than enough. So what are you doing with your more than enough? Are you giving it to those who are less fortunate? We're not talking about just physically. We're also talking about spiritually. Remember, the, the rich man had an opportunity to see Lazarus pretty much every day. He was laying at his gate. So one of the questions the Holy Spirit asked us, who has been laid at your gate that you can minister to, that you can be a blessing to? This is our responsibility. So we just recommit, rededicate ourselves to making good choices, making the right choice to please our Father. Amen. Listen, we love you in the Lord. We just thank God for the opportunity to be here with you at a new time at 11 o'clock p.m. And we just love you for taking the time to watch us, to, to support us. I want to thank our partners also. And you need us, then call us. We're going to have information at the end of the broadcast. Call us. We'll stand in agreement with you. We will see you next week at the Master's Feet. Be blessed. We love you. Thank you for joining our program at the Master's Feed with Pastor Regina Moore. Soul Gathering Ministries is located at 7600 South University Avenue in Little Rock, Arkansas. For more information, call 501-773-1400 or go to soulgatheringministries.org. You may also email us at soulgatheringministries at yahoo.com. Join us next week for another inspiring word from Pastor Regina Moore.